Hi again, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. I am Dan Scott, the voice of the Paladins. It is great to have you with us as always. And uh, this week we're going to be talking women's lacrosse with the uh, head coach of our lacrosse program here at Furman, Lauren Farber, who is joining us in studio. Good to see you. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you uh, for being here. Um, this is a, dare say, uh, exciting time in your life personally. Absolutely. Two, Absolutely. Two years removed from being a player here at Furman, and, and now you're, you're guiding the program here. How does that happen? I, You know, some things had to happen, <laughs> and, um, you know, I've been the girls' strength coach for the past two years, and so there's a change in leadership, you know, halfway through the season. Um over the winter and then I was asked to step in I'm like absolutely you know I know this team I know these girls I've played with the juniors and seniors on the team so you know it's been an interesting adjustment but you know I was more than happy to step into the role what was there any hesitation on your part at all like am I ready to do this or was it like let's just charge head forward into it let's just charge head forward into it you know I knew it was going to be a challenge but you know, I was willing to step up and, you know, kind of take it head on. So it's been a great experience so far. I want to talk about that transition a little bit. But uh, just let, let's start from the present and, and work backwards a little bit. Uh, you're getting ready. We record this and drop it on Tuesday. You're going to open Big South Conference play tomorrow here at Paladin Stadium against Wofford. Mm -hmm. What's been your assessment of the team during the preseason so far? Yeah, you know, um, I think the girls are all really excited to, you know, get into conference against Wofford. Um, they're ranked just below us in the Big South, but I think for us, we're more than prepared. You know, we've had a rough off season, but we've also played a top 25 schedule. Mm -hmm. So we have played the best of the best and competed against some of the top teams in the country. So I think going into Wofford, um, you know, we're more than prepared. And now we just need to have the confidence to go out and execute like we know we can. And, and, and the scheduling there's always a debate about what kind of schedule do you want to play, you, you, whether you have a younger team, an older team. You can go down those rabbit holes. But the, the bottom line is that you have played, what, three top 25 programs in your preseason, Clemson, James Madison, and Florida. So do you like that kind of challenge in a non-conference schedule? You know, I – I like it to some extent. You know, a lot of the other teams we've played have been teetering the top 25. So I think, you know, you got to have a nice blend. I like playing one or two teams in the top 25, you know, a couple right on the edge. But then um, I would have liked to have some more, you know, confidence builders in there. But overall, again, we want to be playing teams that are better than us because everything we do prepares us to conference. You know, season 0 0 starting now. A am I correct in, in saying that you, by and large, inherited this schedule? I did. Because of the timing of, of when you took over the job so you really had no choice you just had to plow ahead with what's yep, there right yep just take it and run with it you know got my team got the schedule you know just got to prepare as best we can you were a four-year letter winner here mm -hmm. uh and, and you played under two different head coaches correct mm -hmm. so transition is not something that is foreign to you did that experience as a player has it helped you in this role knowing what your players are going through now with the change in leadership and the transition. What you went through as a player, is that helping you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I've been through it, and I lost three coaches that I really loved when I was playing. So I think having gone through that transition, you know, being open to change and being open to someone new um, who might have different, you know, thoughts and ideals. But, um, you know, I've taken the good and the bad from that transition, you know, trying to make it into my own to make it as smooth as possible for these players. And you also, especially in this day and age of, of athletes moving on and, and changing pretty much at the drop of a hat, changing schools, you made a decision to stay. A and I'm sure that for the players that you're now coaching who made a decision to stay, that, that's got to feel good for you, that there's some loyalty to the program as a whole. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What, 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 what were the conversations like when you were named the, the interim coach and, and, and the, with the timing and everything, say when you had your first team meeting and your subsequent player meetings, what were those early conversations like for you with your players? Yeah, I think, you know, I had a lot of individual meetings 
with the players prior to meeting with the team as a whole, and a lot of it was just for me to, you know, get to know them, um, kind of see what their experience was like in the fall before I got there, um, and, you know, just kind of lay out my expectations for them as well. So, you know, I got to come in as a head coach, and I got to be making relationships with these girls. I got to start building trust right off the bat. So a lot of those individual meetings right off the bat were me just trying to get to know the girls, get to know them as players, as people, um, learn their experience um, from the prior years. And then when we met with the team, you know, it's like, right, we're hitting the ground running just because we're having a change right at the beginning of the season doesn't mean we're just going to, you know, give up the entire year. We're right. going to tr- go on and we're going to try to win conference. So. so what about the transition from having played, as you mentioned, with juniors and seniors on mm. this team to now coaching those same players? It, it, what, what's the experience in doing that been like? Um, it hasn't been too bad. <laughs> um, you know, thankfully, I think I was, I was a captain on the team, you know, I kind of, um, I don't know. I er- kind of earned their respect when we lost our coaches. We went a whole fall season, right? you know, without any coaches. So that kind of put me and my other fellow teammates, you know, other fellow seniors in a leadership role we might not have been in. And then I've also been their strength coach for the past two years. So mm-hmm. again, a little different roles being, you know, a head coach in determining playing time. But again, you just got to make that divide and be like, look, like we're, you, we're all here to win a championship. We're all have the same goal. You know, there's going to be times where you're going to hear things you don't want to hear. You might not be playing as much as you'd like to. And just because, you know, it's like, oh, like coach Farber's are here, you know, um, you know, we're still, I don't know. You just got to make that divide off the bat and it hasn't been too bad, you know, since I've been a strength coach. So has it been difficult for you? Because I'm obviously these, these players were your friends. Mm -hmm. Has it been difficult for you to to flip that switch and and say, I'm now your head coach and I'm going to have to make these hard decisions? And has it been difficult to make hard decisions? Um, it has to some extent. You know, again, in the back of my head, it's just got to be. You know, we got to do what's best for the team, and mm-hmm. we got to put in the team in the best position to win. So I've I've had plenty of really hard conversations with a lot of the upperclassmen. You know, who might not be seeing minutes that they want, but again, um. All the girls want the same thing. They want to win, and they want to do what they can um, to help the team. So it's just identifying everybody's individual roles because it's not going to look the same for everybody, and, you know, just go from there. But, you know, it has been difficult, but I, I'm absolutely willing to have those conversations. And, and life is funny. You had no idea a couple of years ago when you and the other upperclassmen were basically running the program while the last head coaching search was going on, that that was preparing you for what you're doing mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Yeah, no, it absolutely has. Um, yeah, I don't know. And then I've been, I've been their strength coach for the past two years. Mm-hmm. So I've already been in like a leadership coaching role with them. So it, that has also made the transition a lot easier. Yeah, I, I would imagine having that bridge. Yeah. Uh, and it's, so it's not like it's total shock. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. The other thing uh, that I was doing some research on uh, this morning before we, we did this, uh, you're 24, you're two years removed from being a player here. So it got me to wondering where does that stick uh, stand out or how does it stack up in the um, list of the youngest coaches at the Division I level in, in any sport. Um, Aaron Matson took over the University of North Carolina field hockey program when she was 22, and by the time she turned 23 that same year, they won a, a national mm-hmm. championship. But outside of that, the youngest Division I football coach in America is Kenny Dillingham in Arizona State. He's 33 years old. The youngest Division I men's basketball coach in America is Trayvon Sadler at Nichols State. He is 29 years old. So th- those are old guys compared to, to you, 24. So it, it, as far as I can tell, at the Division One level, you're, you're the second youngest head coach. It is I don't know, is that a badge of honor in, in some way, or is it something you even think about? You know, it it is really cool to think about. You know, I'm kind of getting experience that not a lot of people my age get, but, you know, I also just don't want to be labeled as a young coach. You know, I'm experienced, and, you know, I've played under phenomenal coaches, and I've also been working with phenomenal coaches over in the weight room with the Bernardis. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've had great mentors, great experience, you know, and I just want to take that, you know, to elevate my program. So 
I love being a young coach, but I also don't want to be, you know, just labeled. It. Yeah, right. I don't want to just be a young coach. I don't know. I get it, and, and I get it, and we all know how this works. If there's not mm -hmm. enough success, you won't be a young ex-coach. Mm -hmm. that, that's just the way the way it is today. That's not going to happen here uh, because th this uh, th this young lady here is phenomenal at what she does, and the the, uh, the track record she has as a player. And you mentioned the Bernardis. I, I, I just I always laugh because. Uh, I, I kid Andre. He's the kind of guy who makes coffee nervous. Has, has any of that – were you always an intense competitor anyway, or has any of working with them ramped that up? What has that experience been like? It's absolutely ramped that up. You know, I was a – you know, really competitive athlete and player and just person in general. Mm -hmm. um, my freshman year was the Bernardi's first year in the weight room. So, you know, I've been in their program, been under them as a player for four years, and now I've been working for them for the past two. So, you know, a lot of the culture pieces with the Furman lacrosse team has stemmed from them and the things that I've learned um, and wanted to carry forward. So, you know, all, all they've done is elevated me and they're – absolutely been like my number one mentors um as well as my lacrosse coaches in the past and and you, you find out regardless of whether it's sports or whether it's broadcasting or, or whatever it is you, you learn different things about how to go about your craft from different people sometimes it's learning what not to do from people mm -hmm. sometimes it's learning what to do or maybe to take this piece or this piece from <clears throat> from different people who may not be doing exactly the same thing you're doing but especially when it comes to leadership and developing what it takes mm -hmm. to become a leader. And it, it sounds like you've gotten a good head start on that. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. What, what, what do you think your biggest strength is? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess my biggest strength would probably just be, I think, overall, like my confidence and my ability, you know, uphold a standard. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a balance between just – being hard on your players all the time, but then also, you know, celebrating the little moments. So, you know, with my team, like, we've got a standard, and if a single person on the team doesn't follow it, you know, there are repercussions, and, you know, we got to make sure we're um, holding everybody accountable. But I guess that's my strength. But you also sounds like you understand that you have to take time to celebrate wins. Mm -hmm. celebrate, celebrate the little victories. Yeah. 100%. You know, we got we got instill confidence and instill belief in our players. So, you know, obviously under that standard, but um you know, I need my players to believe in their own abilities and you know, I have full belief in the team, so hopefully they feel that from me. We're visiting with uh, Lauren Farber, who is the uh, interim head coach of the women's lacrosse program here at Furman. So you were picked third preseason in the Big South and, and you have uh three uh, all Big South preseason players in Hannah Dentino, Anna Roser, and, and Caitlin Sousa. What's the layout of, of the level of competition in the Big South? There's a, there's a lot of competition, a lot of competition. <coughs> I think Mercer and High Point are going to be our, you know, biggest games. But, again, I think we're kind of coming in as an underdog, even though we are ranked, you know, third. Um our record's right now 2-7. and seven. We are not a 2-7 and seven team. So, you know, we got great players. Even the girls who didn't get any preseason honors, you know, I think they're going to be able to step up big time because, you know, all eyes are going to be on Hannah Dentino, Anna Rose are on attack. Um, Sousa is going to be matched up on the other team's best players. But we got a lot of people that are kind of flying under the radar that are going to step up big time. Well, and they're going to have to if you're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can't, re you can't yeah. rely on just two or three people. Absolutely. Um, so you, you – Pick third in, in the preseason. You open with Wofford in, in the pre in the season schedule tomorrow, and you said they're picked right below mm -hmm. you. So this is an opportunity to obviously get off to a good start. You feel like the even though the record doesn't show it, did the preseason schedule prepare you well enough for conference play? I think it did. You know, saw a lot of different teams, um, a lot of different calibers. We've played against again, like top 25 teams in the nation we got a top 25 mm -hmm. schedule so um yeah i think it's doing nothing but preparing us for it so all we gotta do is go and prove that you know we belong there do, do you see different styles of play mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um i mean florida is such a fast-paced team that was our last game um before coming into wofford you know um a lot of high pressure, a lot of low pressure. You know, we got teams where all seven of their attackers, you know, are big threats. So um, we've definitely had a lot of challenges ahead of us or behind us. But, um, yeah. Is, is, there, is, is there another sport that you would equate 
that too when it comes to the varying styles of play like let's say basketball for instance mm -hmm. where you'll have some teams that all they want to do is pressure and get up and down the floor as mm -hmm. quickly as they can then you have other teams who are more deliberate want to get you into a, a half court style of game do you, do you find that sort of thing in, in your sport mm -hmm. yeah no 100 percent um and again, all it does is prepare us. So we've kind of we've we've seen everything. We've seen it all. So um, hopefully, coming into conference, we're not shocked by too much. How do you prefer to play? I like to play fast. You know, um, I like to have a fast, athletic team. I like to play aggressive. I kind of like to go out. You know, and just like all right, show it's like all right, Furman's here. We're ready to play. Um, but you know, there's also a time and place where it is good to slow it down. Mm -hmm. You know, if you win the draw, you win the game. If you possess the ball longer, like you're likely going to win the game. So you know, it's playing fast but playing smart. Bob Ritchie always calls it playing fast, but not in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And and there, yep. there's a there's a subtle difference. Hundred percent in the two, right? Hundred percent. Is that the way you prefer to, to play as mm -hmm. a player? Yeah, absolutely. Were you at your best when you were getting up and down the field? Mm -hmm. What flowing freely, I guess, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Visiting with uh, Lauren Farber on this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. Um, you've already had two Big South Offensive Player of the Week uh, nominees this year or honorees this year, Anna Roser who leads the Big South in scoring uh, during the preseason with 27 goals. And Sophie Shaw was uh, also honored as an offensive player. Um, what is, in, in your opinion as a player and now as a coach, what, what's the preeminent, preeminent number of legitimate offensive threats that you have to have to give yourself a chance to be the most successful? I mean, everybody on the field has got to be a threat. Right. All, all seven attackers. Um, I mean, we got – some top girls who like to put the ball in the net, but again, you can't have anybody scared, scared to, you know, want the ball, scared to shoot the ball. Um, so I think to win, we need everybody on the field to be a threat, especially when Sophie Shaw, Anna Rose, or Hannah Dantino are going to be marked up. Uh, but at the same time, there's, I, again, equating it to other sports that I'm more familiar with, there are certain players who, at big moments of the game, they want the ball, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And, and so d do you try to feed into that mm -hmm. a as a coach? Yeah, 100%. Were, yeah. were you that type of player? I was. <laughs> were you? Yeah. Um, well, what's, what do you think has been your biggest challenge so far? I think the biggest challenge has honestly been um, the team culture. And, again, that's my strength is, you know, upholding a standard. So I think coming in – from a team who was under a completely different standard in the fall and having to turn that around coming into playing games, you know, I think that's been the biggest challenge is just making sure everybody's on the same page and getting everybody up to speed. Um, I think the team's done a good job at buying in. But, again, we have talented players, but now it's, you know, getting everybody to, you know, play together. And that That's the challenge of any coach in, mm -hmm. in any sport. Yeah. And I think you mentioned – the, the word that gets thrown around a lot and you hear it mostly on either extreme, either when a team is doing really, really well or programs doing really well, they have great culture. And if a team is not doing well and there has to be a coaching change, then you usually hear, well, the, the culture wasn't good. Mm -hmm. It gets thrown around a lot, but really, especially today with all of the distractions that you have, inside college athletics and outside college athletics, if you don't have a good locker room, you're not going to be successful. Mm -mm. No, not at all. You know, I'm going into games and I'm like, it's culture versus culture right now. You know what I mean? Obviously you need talent, but who's, who's going to outwork the opponent at the end of the day? You know, that's kind of my vision. Um, yeah. Have the ladies balled in? They have. They have. That's good. Uh, that, that, that's good to hear because mm -hmm. if you can get that piece, yeah. everything else falls into place. Mm -hmm. so, so what do you know about Wofford? And and what is lacrosse night? <laughs> um, lacrosse night is, you know, we want to get as many fans as we can to the stadium. Um, I love the little play on words. But, right. again, we'll be handing out keychains, little gibbets. You know, there'll be a raffle, raffle to win a pair of Crocs. Um, I think it's going to be super fun. And we're going to be encouraging everybody to wear their Hooford shirts. Oh, nice. It's be great. Yes, yeah, yeah, from, yeah. The, from the basketball. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. What do you know about them as far as scouting report? You know, they're a talented team. Um I think they got a couple key players. They actually have a transfer from Gardner Webb who's done really well for them. Um, but again, I would I'll take our girls over theirs any day. Um, big driving dominant team, but I think we can go out and hopefully dominate the draw and just shut down their key players. Um, yeah. So it's Wofford here on Wednesday again. Mm -hmm. This is dropping on Tuesday. So yep. tomorrow, if you're watching it on Tuesday, 
Uh, six o'clock here is the conference opener, and then Saturday at Gardner Webb. Then you've got a week between games, uh, April sixth at PC before mm-hmm. you're back here on April the tenth against Mercer. Yeah. And that is Morgan's message night. Tell our our viewers what that is. Yeah, uh, Morgan's message is um, a lot of universities have it around, but it's basically just supporting athlete mental health so I've got a couple of my players a part of the club here at Furman and it's just a game you know to bring to light athlete mental health and how important that is um so we're just going to encourage everybody to come and everybody to support the message and yeah it should be good I, I gotta ask you before we get into wrap-up mode because when you're a player at this level we know that you've got the academic side that you have to take care of but when it comes to the sport, you, you, you practice, you concentrate on doing your job. As a head coach, as you're finding out, I'm sure, and this is what I want you to talk about, I, coaching the, do, doing practices and coaching the games has to be a respite. Are you finding out all of the other things that you're expected to do as a head coach that have nothing to do with what goes on on the field? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you like that? You know, it's different. You know, when you're a strength coach, you don't really get into the ins and outs of that. Um, mm-hmm. You do a little bit. Um, obviously, the athlete's well-being is, like, our number one priority. But um, there's definitely a lot more ins and outs um, compared with being a head coach. But, you know, I think it's just understanding all of it. The athletes go through a lot. We demand a lot from them. School demands a lot from them. They got their social life. They got friends. They still got to sleep and make sure they're eating all their meals. You know, there's a lot of stress put on them. So mm-hmm. I think it's just, you know, kind of understanding that part of it. But you're, you're dealing with – all of those individual players and all of that stuff mm-hmm. and, and coaching, but you're also dealing with recruiting, you're dealing with fundraising, you're dealing with parents, you're dealing oh, with yeah. all of these yeah. all of these other yeah. things that uh, on one hand have nothing to do with what mm-hmm. transpires on the field, but on the other hand, it's all part of the process. It is. It absolutely is. Yeah, you definitely want to make sure you're taking care of all those variables in order to be successful. W- w- was that part, of the, that part of the job a shock to you? I, I knew what I was getting into. I knew what I was getting into. So, you know, it wasn't a shock too much. It's just nothing I've, you know, really had to deal with before. So, um, yeah. You're getting a, getting a, a crash course, aren't you? I am. Yeah, this, this it's awesome. Is the, this is a whole it. different yeah. kind of education. It really is. But I, I have absolutely been loving the experience. So, well, um, see that, and, and I love that because, um, you know, people will say that sometime. But as we're sitting here talking, I, I can actually look in your eyes as you say that. And I can, I can see the sparkle. Mm-hmm. I can I can see the fact that you are absolutely having the time of your life right now. What 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 does the future hold? I mean, do you want to have this job on a permanent basis? Has that conversation even come up yet? What 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 does the future hold? Not yeah, I you know, I don't know. Uh, I'm absolutely loving the position I'm in right now and I guess my goal right now is just to win a Big South mm-hmm. championship. Um so, yeah, we'll see. We'll if see. you would do that, that would give you quite a bit of leverage in negotiations moving forward. Absolutely would. would. Yeah. <laughs> be a nice position to yeah, be in. Yeah, right. Anything else about this program that we need to talk about before we wrap it up? I don't think so. I think you pretty much covered it all. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, it's, again, a, an interesting dynamic here. And you obviously we root for all of our sports here. But you can't help but root for – someone who has been put in the position and willingly accepted the position, by the way, that, that Lauren is in. And, and, and then you, you talk and you, you, you see, the, see the intensity and you see the spark and, and just, man, I'm hoping that this conference season gets off to a good mm-hmm. start tomorrow yeah, and you start, start building some momentum. Absolutely, absolutely. So 6 o'clock against Wofford here at Paladin Stadium. It is lacrosse night. So you're going to get a, some free stuff for coming in and get to register for uh, what you said, a pair of Crocs or something mm-hmm. else that'll be given away. Want to get as many people in here as we can to uh, watch the games, and then uh, of course they are all. Uh, if you can't make it, they're all available on live stream as well. You, you look like you're having the time of your life. I am. This is great. I'm yeah. loving it. It's, it's always good to be able to do something you love, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, that's great. <laughs> Well, thank you for uh, spending some time with us today. Uh, We uh, look forward to seeing how this story continues to play out, and we'll continue to watch it and and, uh, try to get you back on before the season wraps up. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That is Lauren Farber. This has been Inside Furman Athletics. And I'll remind you again, this is dropping on Tuesday, the opener, conference opener with Wofford here at Paladin Stadium, Wednesday, 
at 6 p.m. For Lauren and all of us here at Furman, I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you and so long, everybody. (laughs) 